Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a ferret care guide. Now I did one of these a while back and although not much of the information has changed but I wanted to make a better version of it and also there was some information that I now do not agree with so I'm just going to make a ultimate 2020 ferret care guide so if you're researching to get a ferret or if you have a ferret and maybe you want to improve your care watch this video and find out how you can care for these little fuzzy noodles so as for cages you need a minimum of two by four foot tall some good cages that i recommend is the critter or ferret nation this is one of the best cages you can get there is also a cage by kt that my friend uses and it looks like this this is also a really good cage or you can use bird cages now you can only use certain type of bird cages and one I recommend is, I don't know what it's called, but it has the same dimensions as a critter nation or ferret nation and it's the same sort of look. I use it and it looks like this. This is a really good cage, just be sure to add levels. I've added levels using NIC grids. If you want to see her cage, you can go on my channel in the ferret playlist and you will find her cage tour. So now for the things you need in your cage, you obviously need some sort of bedding to line it. I recommend using fleece because it's gonna save you a lot of money and you can reuse it so it's better for the environment. And then you can just litter train your ferret which they are capable of being litter trained. Some ferrets are stubborn, this one. So something you can do is just the bottom tray bit of your cage filled with litter and that's where they can go and then the rest use fleece for. Now when it comes to litter training I recommend using a large cat pan something low enough that they can get in but something big enough that they can put all four feet in. They don't like small litter pans so don't worry about buying them triangle ones. For litter I would only recommend using Yesterday News because I find it's the best and it's the most safest. You don't want to use any sort of cat litter just because it can get up the nose and if we're to ingest, especially clumping cat litter, it can cause a blockage. Now, you'll also need some toys, never get rubber toys for their cage because ferrets will have a tendency to chew and they might ingest it which is dangerous so I like to stick to jingle balls, she loves jingle balls and plushy toys then you'll need a hammock or a couple hammocks I haven't got her hammock yet because she was free roam but due to some circumstances she's had to be caged again but I am waiting for her new hammock to come in Hammocks are really great because they will love to sleep in it. Tunnels, I'm actually using a tunnel for her to access her levels. And food and water dishes, never use bottles for their water because it can break their canines. If you don't know what their canines is, it's the big teethies at the front. And bottles just don't provide enough water, which ferrets need a lot of water since they are carnivores. They eat a lot of meat, which means they have a very high salt diet, so they need a lot of water so they don't get dehydrated. So now on to diet. These guys are obligate carnivores, meaning they can only eat meat and nothing else. Now, you should be feeding a raw diet. Now, I know that sounds harsh, but no matter what kibble you feed, I don't care if it's the top brand of kibble, that kibble is still going to have a list of ingredients that are not designed for these guys to eat and it's all just a money making thing. They use the cheapest ingredients to fill out a kibble and to actually make it a biscuit form. You can't just go mushing meat together and expecting it to form a kibble so they need other ingredients such as corn and stuff to fill out the kibble and to make it into a biscuit meaning that you're still feeding your ferret bad food that will cause insulinoma now if you don't know what insulinoma is I have a whole video on what it is what causes it which 
the main thing that causes it is non-meat ingredients and how to prevent it so I'll put that video in the description box. I'm so fed up with all these pet tubers trying to promote kibbles and recommending brands like Ysong and stuff when it's just not right and you're putting these guys at risk of a deadly disease because insulinoma 99% of the time the ferrets don't make it through it and then you end up losing your little fuzzy noodle. Now when feeding raw food you have to make sure you are including the three main staples which is muscle meat, bones and organs. And then you can also supplement things like egg or salmon oil as a laxative instead of using them ferret paste. Never buy them ferret vites or lax paste because again they are filled with ingredients. I put this in my insulinoma video so make sure to look at that video to learn more. As for grooming, these guys depending on what kind of ferret you have, you won't really have to do much grooming. She is a semi ingor Her fur is kind of like a normal ferret's winter coat so if you have ferrets and during the winter they get quite long well she is like that all the time i've had her for a year now and she's over a year old and she has never changed her coat her coat has always been very long and plush so if you have an angora or a semi angora yes you will need to comb them every so often. I haven't really have to comb her because one, I haven't even seen her really shed that much to the point where I have to comb her. Even with short head ferrets, you really don't really need to brush them. Every so often, yeah, give them a little brush. It will be good for their coat to get their oil spread, but brushing is not a big thing. Two things that are very big is nail trimming. Ferrets nails grow very quickly and they get very long and rounded, meaning they get caught on everything. So you will need to trim your ferrets nails about every week or two because they do grow very fast. And you'll also need to clean their ears. You can just use either a pet safe wipe or just cotton buds and just to clean the surface of their ears. And then something I do every so often is I will just get a baby toothbrush and I will brush her teeth. I don't worry about buying toothpaste because I don't think it's really needed. When you're feeding the raw and giving the bones, it will clean their teeth. But just every so often, you know, raw food can still over time build up a little bit of plaque. So just every so often go over their teeth and keep them nice and clean. So I recommend desexing your ferrets, no matter if it's male or female, female especially. It reduces the chance of getting any cancers or tumours and also behavioural issues. With females, if they are in heat and not brought out of heat, they can die. It's not a joke, they can. It is because when they're in heat and they haven't mated with someone, they overproduce hormones which can lead to death so make sure you are desexing them. You also want to do yearly checkups at the vet just to make sure they're healthy and if you have an elderly ferret make it maybe two to three times a year just to ensure your elder ferret is doing all right. For vaccines, I'm going to do a video on vaccines for all animals, but ferrets do need vaccines. I'm definitely not against vaccines, I'm quite for them, but I'm not for annual vaccines. I'm going to do every two years vaccinate her just to prevent her from getting any disease like distemper. Now there is a reason behind I'm only doing every second year, and that is because there is something called over vaccinating, and also it is kind of risky to vaccinate now i'm not against it like i said but some animals can have reactions so i'm gonna do a whole video explaining on the over vaccinating and the risks and from what i've learned so stay tuned for that video but that is how you care for your little fuzzy noodles